Hi guys, this is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, it's hard to believe, but it's time for me to do my 12 weeks of fall and Halloween projects again. 2021 is just flying by, isn't it? Well, as you can see, this is going to be a Halloween project. It's a 3D project, and all my 12 weeks of fall and Halloween will either be a 3D project or a fenfold card. So this is featuring the cute, I love these, tombstone treat boxes. They are so cute, and I really hope you enjoy making this. And if you want to make it with me, you can pause the video, go down to the video description, and click on that blog post link. That'll have all the dimensions and the supplies that you need. And if you need to order anything, you can click on the online store link below in the video description. And I've also got a shop link on my uh, blog. So let's go ahead and get started. My tombstone box is going to use everything that's in the cute Halloween suite that's in the July to December mini catalog. And first off, I'll show you the bundle. This is the cutest Halloween stamp set. Along with the punch. Forgot to look at the name of the punch, but isn't that cute? So you can uh, punch out your pumpkin, your ghost, and your cat. And also uses these stars. These are called Cute Stars Adhesive Back Sequins. And we'll be using the Tombstone box, which I'll show you here in a minute, and the... Um, Let's see, the cute Halloween designer series paper. It's a six by six pack. Okay, so the stamps we're gonna need, we're going to get the punch out of the way for right now. You're gonna need the both, the ones for the cat. This is the face for the cat, and you need this, this is the, uh, uh, the ears for the cat. Then the pumpkin, these two and that, and the ghost is gonna need this, this, and this. We're gonna need the spider, and we're gonna need the hay boo and the trick or treat. So those are all the stamps you're gonna need. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now we're going to do some stamping. I'm grabbing a piece of basic white. I want it to be at least a one and a half inch strip this way. And I made it longer than I knew I needed. This is actually a five and a half inch piece. And I'm going to bring this punch in. Now the trick with the builder punch is you want to hold it upside down. And then you want to see that's going to be the angle I want to do my pumpkin. Okay. So I'm going to actually start here on the uh, left side because that's going to be easier. I'm not going to be going across all of these guys here. That's why I'm doing that. So I'll lay this down. I remember I want the stem to be top right corner. I'm gonna grab pumpkin pie, stamp it, put it at that angle, like so. And then I wanted to color it in. So I'm gonna do this, ink it up with the pumpkin pie. And then I'm gonna stamp it here and then line it up. Cause I want it to be a lighter shading of the pumpkin pie. There we go. And let, while we're at it, let's go ahead and do the face. So here's our little face. Oops, flipping stamps around again. Ink that up with my Tuxedo Black Memento pad. And stamp that here. So it does help to get all of the stamping done before you punch it out. Now I'm gonna punch them out after I have them all stamped because if I start, if I do something here and something here, it might end up getting caught in one of these open spaces. So I just do this to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit because I do have to angle just a little bit, but I had it close so I don't have to worry about the cardstock getting in the way. Okay, oop. Punch that out. We've got a little pumpkin. Let's see, let's go ahead and do the cat next. So I'll grab the cat. We're gonna stamp him with the uh, Tuxedo Black Memento. And if you look at him, he's upside down. So we're gonna stamp him upside down. Okay. And then I wanted a lighter version. I didn't want to just have him be black. I thought I'd have him be more gray. So I'm using my Smoky Slate ink pad. I'm gonna ink this up and stamp it in like so. And it always helps to start stamping with your light with your dark color first because then when this is lighter you're going to be able to see through it and see that darker shading so that's why i do it that way oh yeah and we, we're done with the smoky slate so we can put that away but now i want to grab the face for my cat oh that's the ghost there we go and i'm going to go ahead and turn this over so i can line it up a little easier like so and then we want to grab those ears and you want those angled up like this. There we go. So now we've got the cat done. So we'll punch him out, turn him around. I'm going to 
angle them to me and then I'll show you. There we go. Punch that out. And we've got one more, no, actually two more things to punch out. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna turn that over because I got a little black on there. Now I'm gonna look at the ghost. You can see how he's angled. And we're actually gonna stamp the outline of the ghost twice. So let's do this. It's angled just a little bit this way. And a little bit here. Okay, now we are going to take I'm going to show you a little trick here. I didn't, like I said, I didn't want the ghost to be just a black and white ghost. He looks kind of plain that way. So I'm going to take the stamp that colors him in and my Highland Heather ink pad. All these colors are from the uh, cute Halloween DSP. I'm going to take my sponge dauber and pick up some ink. And I could have just taken the pad and gone around it, but then that would have made a real dark outline. I just wanted a nice faded outline. So I'm only going around the outside. The inside is going to stay white. Okay. And we're going to angle this. There we go. Doesn't that look neat? I was really happy. I tried that yesterday and I thought, oh, I like it. So if you just want a little color added to your ghost, that's how you do it. And then we'll grab that tuxedo black again. And here's the thing for the ghost has little hands. Okay, now this one we are going to be stamping. I thought, yes, that's a ghost, but you know what else it looks like? It looks like one of those little, oh, I can't think what they're called, but you can put words on and put it next to them so it looks like they're saying something like they do in the comic strips. Boy, I can't remember the name of that. <laughs> um, if you can remember, you can comment below. I can't remember that for the life of me. Now this says, hey boo, since it is um, Highland Heather. I'm going to put this right here and I can, I'm not since it's Highland Heather, since it's a uh, photopolymer, I can see through it and they've got the hay and the boo far enough away that I can just ink up my boo. And if any of you, I don't know about you, if you've ever seen To Kill a Mockingbird, they, they would say, hey boo, that was their next door neighbor. That just, I just popped in my head when I said that. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and put this down here or read the book. I read the book too. There we go. So now we've got our little text in our text balloon or something like that. I know it's not text balloon, but something balloon. Now we'll go ahead and punch these out. Angle this one this way, like so. And then we'll do this one. Oops, didn't angle that very well. There. You can see we've got all these little pieces, but that's okay. So I'm using every bit of that strip, so you definitely want it to be at least five and a half inches long. I thought I'd have extra, but I actually forgotten I needed to do that too. Okay, now let's grab a scrap piece of old olive. We're going to get all these pieces taken care of. And you're going to use the Everyday Label Punch. It's just a scrap piece of old olive, like I said. Punch this out. I'm going to take my paper snips. Now you can use your cutter too if you're worried about not getting a straight line but I'm just gonna go right across. There we go. And what does that look like? Doesn't that look like a tombstone? Isn't that cool? Got that idea out of the July uh, to December mini catalog. Now we are going to grab the trick or treat, oh, there it is, trick or treat stamp and my tuxedo black memento. Get that inked up. And we will stamp this right in the middle. And I thought, okay, that looks a little plain. So I'm gonna take the old olive ink pad and the spider and I want it to be a faint spider I don't want it to be if you want it darker don't stamp off but I'm going to be stamping off I'm just going to kind of put them around and go in every which direction my uh, greeting here this makes it look a little more spooky Oops, almost forgot to stamp off. That looks pretty good. Now, if you want to stamp over the trick or treat, you go right ahead. But I thought I'd just going around it looked good. So that's, I'm going to leave mine that way. And that is all the stamping we're going to do. So we're going to put these this to the side. And we are going to start making this tombstone box. Okay, now here are the tombstone treat boxes. Now, one thing I want to tell you, there is enough to make eight in a pack. 
bet they're two different sizes. You want to make sure, see how this one is, the one on the bottom is bigger than the, this one here. The smaller one is the bottom of the box and the larger one's the top, okay? So let's go ahead and make the bottom. It's really, really easy to make. So we're going to turn this over and we're going to just fold along all of these score lines here. It helps a lot to get all of these folded before you start putting this box together. You can use your bone folder if you want to, but I found you really don't need to. Oh, I don't think I got that one folded very good. Okay, now, this is so easy, you're not gonna believe it. They've got some adhesive right here. You're gonna fold these down, bring this around. Let's go ahead and take the paper backing off. Now what I do, I start to go down, see how this is still up? But then I push these top and bottom sides in, that way they're up against the edges of this flap I'm putting down. That way I know these are gonna be good and straight. So there's one, fold these in, take the paper backing off, slowly come down, don't put it all the way, just enough that you're inside so that way you can squeeze these against the sides of the flap. There we go, now you've got a nice straight box. So this is the bottom of the box. So put this over to the side. Now you wanna take the larger one for the top and we're gonna do some die cutting with this. So I'm gonna get my die cutting machine out and be right back. Okay, to die cut, you need platform number one, platform number two, the die plate, then a standard cutting plate. You're gonna need your tombstone. This is the top, so it's a larger one. And then I'm using the, uh, see the tasteful labels dies now this is the one i'm going to use now the one they they did a window in the uh, holiday catalog and i uh, i think the stand, the dies are called uh, seasonal frames i think that's what they're called that's what they used i've got those coming i just ordered those actually a couple days ago but this one works just as good so if you've got the tasteful labels this will work too okay so we're going to lay the die right here like so now this is thick and I'll show you a trick on how to get this to die cut through it. Then we're gonna lay this down nice and easy. Run it through. And let's go ahead and run through one more time. Let's see if that got it. You can see the imprint of it. I know it's not quite all the way through. So this is a trick that I learned. We're gonna get that right back in there. You can feel the grooves, when, especially when it's laying down. I can feel the grooves, it's in there nice and tight. Okay, I'm gonna grab this one again. And keeping these squeezed together, I'm gonna turn it over. Make sure you've got that platform underneath it nice and tight. Then we're gonna run it through a couple more times. For some reason, this makes it go through when you turn it over. So I can tell already it's gone through. See, and I would keep this piece, I plan on using this on another card, so be on the lookout for that. I thought, oh, that's kinda of cool, that'd be a neat label. So I'm gonna put that over to the side, and now we've got our window made, so we're done die cutting, and we'll get done with this box. Okay. Since we're gonna have candy in there, I didn't want it falling out, so we're gonna use a window sheet. This is a two and a half by three and a quarter. And I'm gonna grab my glue dots. I thought this was the easiest way to do this. And I'm gonna put one in each corner here. Oops, and you do kinda of have to help it up a little bit, squeeze real tight. It does keep it attached, but because the window sheet's kinda of slippery, sometimes it doesn't wanna lift it up off the paper. Okay, and I'm gonna put one right here in the center because I wanna make sure that the window sheet stays intact. We'll do these corners here. Squeeze that, do each corner. Then we're gonna do another one. As you can tell, that one I squeezed good. I didn't have to, every once in a while you don't have to worry about, see it's popping up with no problem now. Sometimes a glue dot wants to be a pain. And then you're gonna go in the center of one of the long edges too. Oops. Got an extra one, that's no big deal. <laughs> that glue dot wanted to be part of the action, I guess. Okay, so the extra one you really don't need, but it's okay if you get one by accident. I'm gonna turn this over with the glue dots facing down. I'm gonna make sure that these sides here are within these folds here. Now I made this shorter than this, but since these are so narrow, I wanna make this as uh, wide as I could. 
still make sure it stays within the folds. That way too, the glue dots won't show through the window. That's why I had to make it a little big. But see, now they're gonna close just fine. But we're not ready to do that just yet. Let's go ahead and turn this over. So now we've got a nice window and having all those glue dots, it's in there nice and tight. You're gonna, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, to be honest, I think it's actually easier to make this box and then put the stamped images on it. So we'll do just like we did before, get everything folded. Normally I keep things flat, but I think this makes it easier. You can tell where your um, images are going. Okay, so now we're gonna put these in again. So you're doing the, the top just like you did the bottom. Keep those, those in, bring the flap down just a little bit so it's inside and then squeeze these together so they're up against the flap. Okay, same here. Take the paper backing off. And the paper backing off comes off really easy, it's nice. Bring this down, squeeze these up against it. There we go, so now we've got the top. Isn't that cool? It will just look good just doing that, but we gotta decorate it. So we're gonna grab this little guy here. Now I'm gonna have this hanging over a little bit, so I wanna make sure I don't put any on this side. So turn this over, I'm gonna keep my finger here so I don't put any adhesive on that. I'm grabbing my seal. And I'll just put a few lines here on this side. Let's get some on the top here. And then I'm gonna angle it just like this. Before I put it down completely, I wanna make sure I don't have any adhesive under here, and I don't, we're good. Okay, so now we've got that on. Let's grab, I'm gonna lay things down first. This is how I figured out how I wanted them. We've got our boo here. Isn't that neat? <laughs> and then the pumpkin and the cat's gonna go under here. Now I wanted the pumpkin to be popped up. So I'm gonna grab some black Stampin' Dimensionals. And I didn't want him wobbling around, so I'm gonna put two, because he's kind of long. So I thought, oh, we don't want just one, because he's gonna wobble a lot. Now I'm not gonna take the paper backing off just yet, because I wanna make sure I've got everything where I want it. Now I am going to put a bow on. Remember I said I'm using everything from that suite? Well, we've got this beautiful black and white gingham ribbon. I, oh, I love this. And I'm gonna tie this in a bow. So you need just enough for a bow. I'm probably thinking at least like six to nine inches. But to save on ribbon, I decided just to leave the spool, leave it on the spool and I'll cut it off here. Bring this down a little bit. I just want a nice little bow. Just keep playing with it till it looks good to you. Oh, I made this one, right one, just a little bit too short. There we go, that looks pretty good. Grab my scissors and cut. I'm gonna angle this one so it's the same as the other one. Now, I'm not gonna attach it just yet. I'm just gonna lay it down. Get this out of the way. Cause I don't wanna cover up my boo. So you know what, we're gonna go ahead and put this ribbon down. I didn't get this little piece cut off. There we go. Grab my glue dots. You can find one on this strip cause I used quite a few on that window sheet. There we go. Put one right in the back of the knot of the bow. And I know I want this bow to be here in the top left corner. There we go. So yeah, I'm definitely doing fine with the boo right there. And I want the uh, my ghost to be popped up too. So let's put some black dimensionals on it. You can use white, of course, too. I thought since this is dark, the tombstone is, we'll use dark um, Stampin' Dimensionals. So we've got everything placed pretty good. So before I put my ghost on, let's put this on. We're gonna use the seal. Probably use a couple little strips here. Okay. Get him laid down where I want him. Get the boo. Make sure it's not within my bow. Let's see, does that look good? Oh, that does look good. And I'm fine with him hanging over the edge of the box. I actually think that looks cool. Now I'm gonna take the paper backing off. Well, if I can get a hold of it, that one's wanting to be a pain. There we go. And now it looks like he's saying boo to us. Okay, lay these down again. That's where I want my cat. So he's gonna go on with just regular seal. I put a couple pieces on him. Stick him on. Then we'll take 
paper backing off again. I know what it is. These are just small pieces. I'm having trouble holding on to them. There we go. And I'll put it right here, making sure not to cover up that trick or treat. Okay, now we're almost done. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? But I wanted to use those stars. So we're going to grab these and grab the putty side. I'm going to put this on so I don't poke myself. And I'm going to put one of the big purpley ones, would be a Highland Heather, right here. I'm going to use two of each, one of each sides of each color. Hope that makes sense. Then I'm going to grab a black. Normally I don't use an even number, but I decided to group two of them over here. Let's go ahead and use a purple one again, small one this time, and put it next to it. So I think that would be counted as one, so it'll end up being an odd number. And let's grab a little pumpkin pie star, put it right here, grab a small black, put it up here, and I, th oh no, we need another pumpkin pie one, don't we? Let's see. Oh, I want to put another one on there because that looks kind of bland, doesn't it? So I'm going to grab this. My original one, I put one on the top and I kind of made it so it didn't look like a tombstone anymore. So I'm going to put it over here so that way you can see the shape so it looks like a tombstone still. So we've got the box all done. Oop, get all these papers out of the way. Isn't that cute? I really like that a lot. Now, the candy that I picked out, you can use nuggets. If you look in the uh, mini catalog, you'll see that they had to kind of move them around. Uh, I think there are like five of them in there. But these little milk duds, and you'll see these everywhere when Halloween candy comes out, work perfect. So I wrapped it with uh, paper. I wanted to make sure that the images were going this way instead of this way, because that's the way the, it's going to look in the box. So let's go ahead and put this one up here, here, and here. Actually, let's move this one over here, because I want it to be a, kind of away from the old olive that's on here. And now I'm going to show you how to do this. Here's a piece of the DSP. This is a four and a half by one and a half. So I wanted to make sure that the long side is on top and bottom and the images are going upright, okay? Here's my, here are my milk duds. We're gonna lay this down. Now since the, these other images, it didn't matter because they were small, but these were kind of big. So I'm gonna kind of lay this down and make it so I, I've got a lot of the images on here. So you can see a full, almost a full cat and almost a full pumpkin so you know what they are. And then just fold this down, hold it nice and tight so it's not gapping up like this. I don't know if you can see that, see how it's gapping a little bit. Kind of hold on to it, fold it down, do the same over here, and hold it so it's not doing the gap there. Okay. Now this is a side, it doesn't matter which side, but I'm going to have this be the side I put my glue dots. Yes, I'm using a lot of glue dots. You could use adhesive too, but sometimes it's hard to get a narrow strip. So I'm just gonna use my glue dots. I thought it was a little easier. Just put one on each corner. Okay. Now we've already got our folds there, so that kind of helps. That's why you wanna get all the folding done first. Bring this around. Here's my glue dot side. Make sure it's all up against those corners. And then hold this down here so it's laying flat. There we go. So now we've got that covered up. Looks a lot cuter when you cover up the milk dud box, doesn't it? <laughs> then we close this and the, that's why I did the window. And if you didn't do a window, you wouldn't have to cover up your uh, candy unless you just wanted to. But that getting that way you can see all of the stuff goodies inside. I just thought that made it look extra cute. So I hope you enjoyed the first 12 weeks of fall and Halloween. I know I had a lot of fun making this yesterday and I'll be back again on Friday. My goal is to get them uh, uploaded by 3 p.m. Eastern Time every Friday through October 22nd. I'm going to give myself leeway, so I'll say between 3 or three and 4. You know how life can get in the way, <laughs> but I'm planning on getting these up by 3 o'clock every Friday until October 22nd, like I said. And I hope you enjoy the videos. And if you'd like to stamp with me again, make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click on the bottom right corner of the screen or the subscribe button below in the video in the video description. Now, if you live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. Here are the catalogs are available right now. The annual catalog, 
the July to December mini catalog, aka the holiday catalog, and celebration. And if you just click that contact me link below in the video description and give me your mailing address, I'll get these mailed out to you right away. The, your first copy you get for free. And if you don't know about celebration, you don't want to miss out. You can earn a, lo a lot of free stuff during celebration and, and September 30th of 2021. And those of you that have known about Stamped Up for a long time, yes, it's exciting. We get to have celebration in the summer. Love that. And the best deal in this is to join my team. You'll always get a 20% discount as long as you're a demonstrator and all your Stampin' Up orders. So many different perks. And you can learn more by clicking that celebration link below in the video description and just find out everything about it right there. Okay, let me bring this back in one more time. And once again, I thank you for watching my video and please support my channel by giving me a thumbs up or commenting below. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.